Hey guys, welcome back. We have uh, a grading video. This is a grading video. This is a reminder. This is just a very solid, I guess, example. One that this is we're looking at Billy's submission here, her initial submission to PSA. It got botched. It got botched really hard. So yes, this isn't going to happen with every submission, but this is a prime example of why you need to know more than the graders. You need to know what you're doing. If you're grading your cards, you need to know what you're doing in terms of authentic authenticity, condition, all of that. You need to know that before you grade them. You need to know that if you're buying graded cards, you need to know that because you might have to resubmit them. It's the, the sad truth is they're not going to they're not going to get it perfect every time. Sometimes it's going to be extremely bad. Now, this isn't as bad as some of I think Zach Jim Mint Pokemon had a submission that everything in the entire submission just came back as an eight. That's pretty wild to me. Uh, this submission here, we have a lot of cards that were undergraded. And again, it can happen. It's one individual employee that probably did all 20 of the cards in this submission. So if they decide, hey, I'm having a bad day. I want to hit the number seven. I want to hit the number eight all day. That's my favorite number. That's my favorite button. That's what they're going to do. So again, this is uh, personally, I, I see little to no value in grading. I, I think your opinion is more valuable. Chances are most of the people that are watching this video, if you're into Pokemon enough that you're watching this video, there's a good chance, Not maybe not everyone, maybe somebody's brand new, there's a good chance that you know more than these graders do, especially the ones that are looking at this stuff at the bulk level of things. They only have so much time, they got to get through so many cards. It's like any workplace similar to this. If you have a process that you have to go through, you're expected to do that process many, many times as quickly as possible, as effectively as possible. There's going to be errors. You're going to say, hey, boss, I need to slow down. I'm, I'm making mistakes. And they're going to be like, no, go faster and make less mistakes. Clearly, uh, one results in, in the other happening. Uh, <laughs> but But that's what we're dealing with here. I've said it many times, and there's nothing wrong with it. But starting out, we're, we're, they're not paying. I mean, they're going to call, they might call them experts. They might have a badge on it that says, hey, I'm a super duper grader. I'm a professional uh, card enthusiast, card grader. Maybe they're, they're into cards beforehand. Any of the applications for this stuff, regardless of what grading company it is, usually they're like, oh, you don't need background experience. You don't need to know that stuff beforehand. We'll teach you that stuff, that kind of thing. Anyone that knows, like that is truly an expert in this stuff, anyone that's an expert in Pokemon is not going to be taking this position. Unfortunately, that's just the, the sad reality. They're not going to be able to afford somebody that knows anything and everything about whatever they're whatever they're grading. It's just it's it's the sad the sad reality. We have entry level here at seventeen dollars, and you might say, yeah, seventeen dollars an hour, pretty sick. They probably get some pretty good people, but. Oh, the voice cracks on me. I swear I am not hitting puberty for the second time. I hope. <laughs> but uh, hourly range, $17. Pretty good. Not so much in California, in Orange County. That that doesn't go a whole a whole long ways. And again, it's entry level. So yes, as you work up, as you if you work at a company for long enough, there are usually, typically, hopefully. If it's run properly, opportunities to move up into other positions. Maybe you start as a grader, then you can become an expert in some other uh, field or section. Maybe become a manager. Maybe something like that. Uh, maybe even to the extent of, hey, you're going to be you're going to be a head grader, or you're going to be like some uh, someone that overlooked. I know I don't know how much the managers overlook that stuff. They always say that like it went to the head grader, and we made the decision based on that. I think that's more of just like a a flex or an excuse. Uh, but regardless, 17 bucks is probably what you're getting. I always hate like the the application forms and or the um, job postings that they're like, oh, you can you can make up to $32 an hour. The hourly range for this position is 20 to 32. And then it says entry level operations positions generally start at $17. You're getting $17 unless you have some kind of crazy experience beforehand. Um, maybe. Maybe you're a CGC grader and you're you're moving. You're going to be with PSA now. Maybe they take that into consideration. You get more than 17. If you work there for long enough, you probably get more than 17. With the workflow and what I've seen from any of these grading companies, I can't imagine like anyone is going to last very long. Anything like this, warehouse positions, anything like that. I worked in a pharmaceutical warehouse at one point in time. The turnover was insane. I worked uh, when I was in high school. Uh, I worked at a it was like a production facility. Uh, that created created products. We won't go any and any more depth than that. But like the turnover was insane. Like some people were there for like a night. Like they did one shift, they gone. 
this is kind of the same thing. It's monotonous. You got 30 seconds probably per card or less to go through and grade these things. You're going to get shit on the next day or like a week from there because your boss can be like, what the hell? Someone's like pissed off because they got all sevens in their submission. Billy is angry. I don't know. I don't think Billy sent anything angry. Um, I didn't see the correspondence. This is one of the examples that like, yes, everyone's going to be like, oh, you graded this stuff wrong. But like when uh, with a submission that was botched as badly as this one, this might be something where like even customer service has to do something for an individual. Um, and I wish I wish I wish that Billy had um, submit all of these guys, like crack them all and submit them in the same order so that we could have like a before and after of every single one we don't have that we have a lot of them that we resubmit uh some back to psa some to cgc um but uh that, that's the game you're that's the game you're playing and you got to know that and you gotta you gotta take that into consideration uh if you're doing this for financial reasons if you're selling the cards afterwards you need to know hey what do i gotta do and now I say it time and time again. It's the same thing. Whether you're an entry level grader, uh, if that's where you're going to start off your your path, your career path, uh, there is ways that you can build off of that. Yes, you can build an expertise. Is that where you stay forever? Do you move up in the company? Do you try to get a position within the company that's higher up that you're not sitting there grading car cards all day, every day? Probably. Same goes with McDonald's. There's nothing wrong with any... I, I've never personally worked at McDonald's, but I had jobs that paid similar to that. When you're in high school, you don't have any work experience. You don't have any uh, necessarily a post-secondary education that's required for something else. You don't have the means to maybe start something up on your own and or that isn't just the, you know, the path that you want to go. There's nothing wrong with working at McDonald's. It, it, does it suck if someone works at McDonald's and they just never move up and they're always just one of these closing crew members, team members for like, if that's what they want to do, um, then that's what they want to do. Hopefully, yes, there are opportunities. You can move on from that. Anyone has the ability to better themselves and move on and do something better than a closing crew member at uh, um, McDonald's. So this is an orange, uh, so we're like orange, we're Anaheim, um, we're looking at Orange County, McDonald's jobs, and they are 16 to $17 an hour. So that's the way I always make the comparison. It's not a shit on anyone that has a job that's hopefully temporary, uh, hopefully they can work their way up, maybe they, maybe they work there, maybe they become management, maybe they buy a franchise, maybe they start something like that, they know the operations inside and out from top to bottom, uh, that could be a, a great opportunity for someone to make decent money. Even as a manager, um, probably you're not making seventeen dollars an hour in Orange County. That would be that would be pretty sad as a manager, or if you move up into any of these companies. But rest assured, you're, there's probably a lot of these seventeen dollar an hour employees at PSA, at CGC. I don't know what CGC pay is starting out, um, but regardless, if it's somebody that's new to it, somebody that's getting into it, they're gonna make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. Grading is very subjective extremely subjective. No, the AI stuff is not actual AI. It's just scans. And even that is hit or miss with consistency and, and what is eye appeal and everything else. It's it's a whole mess. So we are picking on PSA a little bit today. Um, but this uh, rest assured, this could happen anywhere. This could happen with any of the companies. You need to know what you're doing. This is the perfect example of you need to know what you're doing. They've all graded fake cards altered cards, stuff like that. They've all done it, every single one of them. There isn't a grading company that exists. Maybe XYZ grading, uh, that's no no one's ever submitted a card to them uh, because it's in some dude's garage and he's just, all he's doing is uh, putting his own cards in a case. Who knows? But any of the big guys, they've all made mistakes. They will all continue to make mistakes. Uh, and it's up to you. It's on you uh, to, to educate yourself and know same with counterfeits, same with condition. You need to know what you know um, and value your opinion, even if you want them in a case, even if you want the additional value from selling them, even if you want to collect them because you love the tens on the on the labels, you love the cases, you like to display them, be careful displaying them. They don't actually protect the card any more than what a standard magnetic case or any, any one over the other. There's no like UV protection. Don't leave them in the sun. Don't put them out on a shelf where there's like a window and it's shining in on them. It will fade the card. Don't leave them anywhere humid. You still need humidity control. You can't bring these into the tub with you and rub a dub dub. That will absolutely end poorly. Uh, we've seen somebody that had them, uh, had uh, graded cards stored outside of a bathroom 
and even just the moisture coming from the bathroom into like the nearby closet or whatever uh, was enough to shrivel them all up within the cases. Be careful. So that card protection, authenticity, condition. You need to know all of that. You need to do and know all of that stuff regardless of whether you want to grade or not. That's important stuff to know. Important. To, it's your whether you're selling this stuff or not. I mean, eventually it's all going to get sold. Uh, at some point, you're going to die unless you're getting buried with them. Then, by all means, let me know if that happens. Uh, that would be a very historic event. But okay, without further ado, let's go through the cards here. Um, my apologies to anyone that didn't want to or he, you know expect to hear that rant beforehand. But here we have it. We have vending seven. The old Zapdos Prism. Very cool. Very classic. It had a PSA 7. Uh, it was resubmit to CGC and got a 9. So uh, it seems like the... Um, again, it could be a combination. We have to take it all into consideration of the grading scale between the two companies. With This doesn't mean that PSA 7s are always 9s. I think this was more the person that was grading uh, the at PSA was grading this stuff too low. Um, as we'll see, even when you send it back to PSA, some of this stuff, and I wish it would have all gone from like PSA to P back to PSA, just to show the difference between one grader and the next, uh, would have been a, a nice side by side. But I think anyone and everyone can agree that a, a CDC nine for the most part is going to be cleaner than a PSA seven. There are some very clean PSA sevens. I mean, anything can be misgraded. Um, but that's just the first of our example. So, original PSA sub here, uh, and this is a PSA to PSA example. Um, there's some that haven't been submit or will be submit or maybe are currently submit. So, we don't have an example for every single one of the 20 cards, which also would have been sick. Um, and shame that it uh, that didn't happen that way. But I'm sure uh, Billy was pretty discouraged when she got stuff back that was a 7 that she didn't think was necessarily meant to be a 7. All right, we got the Jigglypuff. Very cool. The old sealed ass fancy graffiti. What do we got next here? So this is a seven. Again, this person just loves the number seven. Lucky number seven. Um, another seven. This was also from the original sub, sub. So I'm not sure which one is which. Which one, if anyone wants to go and do the forensic on that, forensics on that, uh, they're welcome to do so. Uh, very hard to tell these, these cards from one from the other, other than like the edges and stuff like that. Uh, maybe centering slightly. We'd have to overlap them. We're not going to do that. All we need to know is the fact that I went to CGC. One of them got a super duper yellow label. Again, not distracting to the eyes. We went with simplicity and we didn't want color. We didn't want blue on there because black and white is easier. It doesn't detract from the card, but yellow also doesn't detract from the card. I'm going to try not to CGC bash in this one. Again, guys, it's nothing against any... I, I will give props to uh, or bash on any of the grading companies for any of the mistakes they make doesn't matter which one i don't grade with any of them i'd like to think that i'm somewhat biased in that regard other than the fact that like clearly uh my opinion is that i i don't want to grade i don't i don't place value in this stuff like sure i get it it's easier to sell there's going to be less disputes if you have it in a case and this is the grade on it even then sometimes stuff is like misgraded or some of the stuff that's in worse condition that maybe it shouldn't be uh there's there's plenty of times where you have oh, this isn't a 10 this is i know it says 10 but it's not a real 10 some people are fine with that some people are like what the hell i don't want a fake 10 all comes down to like preference or anything like that so we got the the biggest of the bonerist labels on the jigglypuff here uh, and then we have just a, a black and white 10 over here. Sick. Gem mint. Pristine. Sick, nasty. Very cool. Um, so, again, th clearly that wasn't a 7. I would like to hope that this wasn't a 7. Whether or not it deserved the, the pristine 10 gold yellow dogger 69. If you resubmit this, you're probably not getting another one. Maybe it gets a 10. Maybe it's the black and white label on the second one. Maybe this one, maybe it comes back the same. Maybe it comes a nine. Maybe it comes, maybe this, maybe they swap places. Who knows? There's a certain amount of inconsistency. We'll, we'll be showing some of that on the channel in the future, but just know like this is, this is one of those examples where if, if you don't know what you're looking at, if you don't know the condition um, of the card itself, if you're not second guessing that opinion that you paid for the first time, um, I think there's an argument to be made here that maybe even, like, I guess the argument would be stronger if you cracked and submit everything back to the exact same company, all the same cards in the same order, uh, to see if you would get get these back in a higher grade. And if everything went from a seven to a ten, 
Like then, then you can probably say like, "Hey guys, um, can I have the the money back from that initial submission?" Like clearly, the guy that was working there at that point in time was he was just hitting sevens, right? Regardless, we got two tens come out of that. We have the PSA original sub here with the the Koduck. Very cool little side duck doing some dances. We got a little little closed eyes dancing. Whatever he's doing, uh, went from a PSA seven. Uh, and it is a CGC 10. So again, we're not on the same scale, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, you would never expect to crack a CGC 10. I don't think. I'm sure it could happen. But you're probably not cracking a CGC 10 uh, and crossing it over to a PSA 7. Again, a lot of this stuff is like, it's wild to me. The amount of like cracking and resubmitting and the amount of fees that these grading companies probably just soak up by people getting the wrong grade and resubmitting. Like there's certain stuff like, okay, it's, it's a nine. It's, it's clearly a nine. It's a nine. Most of the time, it's like an illustrator, a certain illustrator, the, the only 10 illustrator from PSA, uh, that, uh, that was a nine and a nine and a nine. I, who knows how many times it was a nine. It was in a pizza box. Um, and then there was a Guinness world record, uh, for a, a the biggest sale ever, which wasn't actually a sale. It was a partial trade and God knows if that's a real number or not. Again, a lot of fake stuff going around, especially when it has anything to do with Logan Paul. But if you have a nine, let's say you have a nine, it's a PSA nine, you send it in, it gets a nine, that's expected. There are people that will keep cracking that nine and hope to get that 10. Like it's close enough. They're like, oh yeah, eventually it's going to get a 10 and it will. Whether or not that's worth it, it's more the case with something that's very hard to grade. If it's very hard to get in a 10, there might be a giant premium on it and it's worth sending that card in over and over again. They're going to crack it because I would think most of the time a grading company doesn't want to admit like, especially if it's even close, if they can even debate it whatsoever, they're going to say, no, head grader said that this is still a nine. It's not getting the 10. So you're going to crank it to try to get the 10. Essentially, it's it's so when you're buying 10s. And when you're looking at pop reports, you got to know, you got to take into consideration that, hey, there is definitely some some crackage going on. A lot of the nines, there's probably it's probably showing a whole lot more uh, nines. Someone's not going to crack a 10. So the 10, the 10 numbers are probably very close to what they should be. Not everyone sends their labels in. Not everyone sends the card in in the case to get it re-slabbed or regraded because oftentimes they're just going to say, hey, no, this is the same grade, that kind of thing. Uh, or they don't want that uh, that to be an option for the grading company themselves. So good. Uh, we get the the resub ten, seven to ten. We got the old eight. We got the, the tattoo. Very cute. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right whatsoever. Uh, original sub and there. There's the there. There's a nice side by side. We got the eight turning into a ten. Now the one grade up or down. That's probably to be expected to some some degree, uh, but I, I would say that something definitely went wrong uh, on one end or the other when you start skipping two or three grades. That uh, that could be that could be a problem. That could be a thing. What do we have here? PSA original sub. We got the eight on the the old Pikachu and Kushana Kush, Kusaihana. I don't know if I'm pronouncing any of those right. Um, a lot of these Japanese Pokemon names I have never heard or pronounced or in my entirety of my Pokemon journey. I can only imagine the people that are collecting like German and everything else, like learning all the Pokemon. I mean, the, man, there's a lot of Pokemon. Learning them all in several languages would be would be intense. I mean, there's like the the easy stuff. We got the you got the Lizard Downs and the uh, what is it, Glurak in in German. Stuff like that, where you see Charizards all the time, and the Charizard ballers who want to collect all the Charizards, they're like, I, I got a German Charizard. I think that was more just like the expensive cards that are in additional languages. Usually, they get uh, they get pumped out into uh, into existence. Uh, it's like as like an affordable version, or when somebody collects all the ones that they want to collect, or they're just looking for something to add to that species collection or whatever. I guess same with Pikachu, uh, to a to a degree. The multi language stuff usually happens more with that. Now, where were we? Eight. We got an eight. We're going to resubmit it and we're going to get a nine. So this is, this doesn't blow my mind. This doesn't blow my mind whatsoever uh, to go from an eight to a nine. It can happen. It, it, it can definitely happen. Um, and uh, 
and we're not too concerned about that. Like, I'm, I'm, that's that's expected. Uh, was it Leonhardt did his like resubmissions with Beckett with the subgrades? Like, how much do subgrades really make sense when they're changing? Especially the the most wild thing to me is when subject sub when a card gets sent in again. Sure, maybe you can argue that it got damaged, uh, and and that's why some of the subgrades are lower than what they were. You, you damaged it when you took it out of the case. It got damaged again while like you were handling it, while the grader was handling it. Who knows? Uh, but the centering, when the centering grade changes, that, that always blows my mind a little bit. You would think that that's a pretty static thing. I mean, cl clearly, like you're not, and people are hopefully not trimming Pokemon cards. Uh, hard to do so with because of the 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 curl, the uh, the curved corners here. But you never know. Tops, be careful. Um, old sports cards. Be careful. Anything that's square, I guess. Mostly be extra careful. Now, we have the PSA original sub for the old Togepi on a stump. Very cute. Very classic. It got an 8. I got the resubmission as a 10. So that's where that's where that's a stretch. An 8 to a 10. Um, I've seen a lot of 8s, and usually there's some kind of flaw on them that results in them being an 8. Eight. 8s, I love 8s. I don't keep them in a case, but if I can find a nice eight and it's the same price as a near mint card, especially on something that's hard to find like near mint copies of, because if it's valuable, if it's something like a base set first edition hollows uh, or anything like that, uh, the more expensive stuff, then uh, sometimes, you know, it's hard to find in anything other than, or like gold stars or something at this point. Pretty hard to find them raw. Everyone's like, oh, it's a gold star. I better grade it, even if it's going to be a six or less. But uh, there we have it. That's a pretty egregious example. Last one before I let you guys go. We have a nap time slumber party to the extreme. Love that card. Too bad the, the artwork on the slumber party wasn't the entire card. I think the other stuff kind of detracts from it. Uh, by the way, if you're looking for to buy stuff like this, you should probably be, be uh, shopping around on Billy's eBay. You should probably shop around on Billy's eBay. I'll leave a link to that down below in the description. Hopefully she's all right with that. Uh, but uh, if you guys want to check it out, she has and uh, grades and uh, purchases and, and goes through a lot of this. Uh, she's into the obscure Japanese stuff. Very cool. She's tormented me recently because I told her that I wasn't going to collect anything Japanese. And now we're now we're collecting we're collecting verses. We're opening and collecting verses. Uh, on Tuesday, we're going to have a stream. It's going to be pretty sick. I got a couple couple fighting psychic uh, versus packs that I definitely shouldn't open, but we're going to anyway. Uh, and then a bunch of other stuff that uh, that will be heading her way uh, in terms of like Japanese kind of lots, like bigger lots or whatever. Uh, so tune in for that. Probably also some uh, an Ultra Prism pre-release case that we're going to open um, just to, to fill out. We're going to try and make the, the stream at least a couple hours. All right. Seven. What was it? It went to CGC. Uh, another another golden super super goose to the extreme. So, can you can you see how uh, this is the moral of the story here? You got to be careful. You got to know what you're doing. Uh, it benefits you greatly to know what you're doing because the price on this card versus the price on a seven, probably night and day. Uh, and uh, yeah, they're the same card. It's got different plastic around the outside. Um, different grading standards, different submission, different grading company. But again, like I think even if this was sent back to PSA, it could have it could have achieved a 10 as well. It just all depends on which $17 grader you're getting. Um, and again, no offense to them. They got to start somewhere. Uh, and hopefully for, for all of their sake that they, uh, they progress, uh, whether it's through grading Pokemon cards, uh, whether it's through grading in general, collecting, maybe they start a side business. Uh, and they, they pump it up, uh, surely, with the expertise that they gain from that and uh, from, I guess, learning whatever, you know, hopefully they have time to learn about the stuff that, uh, that, they're, that they're grading. Uh, they, can, they can move into something else uh, and be successful. All right, guys, that's it. Join the Discord. See you next time. Bye.